Hi friends, welcome. Today I want to talk about another photographer. Corey Arnold is his name, and he is a photographer, as I mentioned mere moments ago. He is a commercial fisherman. He is a National Geographic contributor. And his photos are very raw. They don't focus too much on artistic aesthetic, but they also don't ignore it as well. Now, I want to focus on his commercial fishing photography in specific today because he has photography in, in different uh, subject matter. I want to go down that road in specific. But his photography emphasizes the importance of using photography as a storytelling tool first and foremost. And this is a good thing for a lot of photographers to hear, specifically photographers who are very focused on aesthetic appeal because they really enjoy the idea of framing up a photo just so. So it's poetic and it... As you look at it, your eyes sing with happiness, like they have little mouths on them, like millions of little mouths all around. By the way, you're, the thing that goes around the black part of your eye, that's a mouth. Uh, look it up. But like, don't trust some of the articles. Like You're going to find some articles that say it's not, and that's just the system. Anyway, carrying on. I'm going to link below to his things. Okay. In the first one, we are looking at a ship from the perspective of the back of another ship. Either that or Corey Arnold can fly or he's going for a very cold evening swim. The light is either late evening or early morning. The brightest points of light in the scene are the four floodlights on top of the ship. And they shine down onto the ocean in a very pleasing way, but breaking up all of the blue of the water. The waves are curling around the ship in an interesting manner compositionally. It looks quite pleasing. We have a couple of diagonal poles shooting off the side of the ship as well, which makes the ship much more visually appealing. This would be a great cover photo for a magazine. And in fact, he does, I, he does have at least one photo that I'm going to talk about today that is in a magazine. I think it's a good idea to think about this as a photographer, different ways that your, your photos could be shared with the world and how you can adapt the way you shoot to, uh, to accomplish that well. On Instagram, it's pretty simple. You put a ship in the middle and you make it square, you will have a, a lovely photo because it's not going to cut off the edges. Uh, people are going to see it from the feed. They're going to be excited about it and they're going to click on it and they're going to say, whoa, this is life changing to me. I'm going to become a father, which is what I think any photographer wants to achieve with their photos. But in this photo, one issue, technically speaking, there's something in my mouth. Sorry, one issue, technically speaking, is that if you cropped it too much, you'd cut off those poles, and that would be very problematic. So perhaps you would want to get back further, right? But this could work, potentially, as a cover in a magazine. I'll get to another photo that is in the cover of a magazine soon. But on the next one, we have a fisherman on top of a crab cage. He is fiddling around with a cord. Very exciting composition. We're sort of pointing up on the fisherman, a semi-diagonal kind of perspective on him. We have some birds flying through in the background. The fisherman is contrasted from the sky beautifully with his incredibly yellow wetsuit, which is designed to keep him from dying. If he falls in the water, he'll have like 12 minutes as opposed to nine seconds. So the... One of the things that is interesting compositionally about this photo is the way the birds are positioned because you could easily run into a situation where you have like half of a bird body poking in in a way that doesn't feel quite right. In this case, we have a wing poking in on the left side. But the fun thing is we also have a wing poking in on the right side. So we have this repetition. A lot of times, at least uh, a personal guideline, if you have something happening on the left side and you also have it happening on the right side, that makes it work, that makes it feel okay. So the way that he worked uh, the complexity of all these birdie elements into the photo is, is very impressive. Now, about this wetsuit, he's covered head to toe. He's wearing gloves. This is not the way that baristas work on a daily basis. Uh, it speaks to how hard these guys work the conditions these guys work in. I mean, his, his suit's very dirty, which kind of tells the backstory of how his day has probably gone or how his past, you know, couple weeks or months has gone with this wetsuit. 
But also you see he's handling a cord, very detailed uh, dexterity work with these huge gloves on. And the overall photo feels, even though it feels poetically glorious, it's also quite messy looking. It, it lets you know that this is a very messy job. In the next photo, we have a guy leaning violently over the edge of a boat. He's trying to grab a buoy. He just has his hand on it. And one of the things I notice immediately about this photo that I love is that Corey leaned over just as much as the fisherman leaned over. A lot of photographers may not do this. They may not commit themselves. And in this case, you see a more aesthetically pleasing photo because of that. Uh, there are other ways he could have gone about this, but this is one way that, that really adds some drama to the mix. Makes you feel like you're there. Makes you feel like you're hanging over the water. You might fall in the water. You might die in 12 minutes if you have a wetsuit, nine seconds if you don't. So it speaks to how dedicated these people are to their work. In the next one, or two actually, I want to talk about, we have some fishermen throwing, it's a very similar composition. We have some fishermen throwing their hook out into the sea to catch one of the lines, to grab the net, or the cage probably, and pull it in. Now I've seen Deadliest Catch, and this is an art of precision and finesse. This is not particularly easy to do. And you see the hook in, like, almost to its target. And you're wondering if it's gonna get there. It's a perfect positioning from um, a compositional standpoint to put a hook in a photo. If you're trying to capture that motion and tell the story, you can see where it's come from, you can see where it's going. And these photos are very similar. Uh, we see, once again, he's hanging way over the edge <laughs> of the boat. This time in much more rough seas, it would be a bit harder to retrieve him. The ship is bigger, problematic. We see the orange uh, wetsuit on one side, and on the right, then the photo on the right side, and then on the photo on the left side, we have a yellow suit. And this is significant because this helps separate them from the brown ship. And we have this nice play of colors with the brown, orange, yellow, and, and blue of everything else in the scene outside of the ship. Looks quite wonderful. Uh, once again, a story of how these guys are. They're, they're craftsmen of their craft. <laughs> they, are, they are incredibly talented at making sure they hit the mark the first time so they, they don't waste time and they don't waste money. In the next one, we have a shot from higher up this time, so we're not at death's door as much. Uh, it looks like he's on the the poop deck. I don't know. The the bridge, I guess, would be the proper term, like the where you would stand outside of where the guy steers the ship. You have the railings and such. He's standing up high. We see the cage coming up, and aesthetically, this photo is not anything particularly special but it tells a strong story. Uh, raising the cage is an important and tense moment in fishing. Believe me, I know, because I've watched Deadliest Catch. I'm sure there are plenty of things about that show that may not be particularly accurate, but I think I can parse which things are accurate and which things are not. And so this is the moment when they realize how much of a catch they do indeed have, how much money they're going to make. And in this case, it looks like it's not such a wonderful catch. Very sad. We have another shot of a ship on the ocean, once again, uh, pointing from the perspective of another ship, or swimming. Um, and I hope he has a good waterproof housing, because it would be heck to keep your camera dry in that sort of situation. I love the square format here. In this case, we're looking at the ship from a more diagonal angle as opposed. The first one, we're looking at it dead on from the front, like I'm looking at this camera right now. But we're looking at it from the side. has a bit more uh, dynamic intrigue to it in this way. The ship is cutting through a wave. So he's jumping into the air. He's, he's on the part where you experience zero gravity for a second, and the water's flying up. We have birds flying around once again. It's a really nice thing that he has these birds to work with. They tend to hang around the ships. And once again, we have the subject roughly in the middle of the frame. And the ship is sort of acts as a character in photos like this. 
it shows that this this place where these fishermen live for I don't know weeks and months I forget how long they go out. They get to know it's their home, it's their floating home. So, uh, telling the story of this ship as the home, as a character in the story, I think is is a, a fantastic way to do things. And once again, a good cover photo for like a photo story about going out and being a commercial fisherman, catching crabs or bigger cra- like crabs with like alien crabs. Because you like your crabs more spicy. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with that. In the next one, we have a fisherman below deck. I suppose he's in the part of the ship where you throw the fish or the crab after you catch them. I don't know shit. Uh, sh- <laughs> that almost went um, profane. I don't know ship anatomy, so I apologize for my stumbles. But he's beating the ice off of the ceiling with a stick. He has this look on his face of, I've done this many times before, this is pure speculation, but I've done this many times before, I don't want to get ice in my eyes, I am good at this, but this is a little bit boring, so I have to make it playful, (laughs) all wrapped up into one. It's a very interesting expression. We have light coming in from the top, above deck shining down and what this does in this scene is it provides a set of circumstances that allows one of the most interesting parts of this photo to happen which is the ice falling looks as if it's falling snow all the way across the frame adds a lot of energy another thing that adds a lot of energy and drama is the dramatic upward angle he's crouched down seemingly pointing up at the fisherman and so the way that one thing that I think a lot of photographers might do in this situation is they would maybe stand up a bit more and they would take a photo of the fisherman with the pole and maybe not get the part where the pole's hitting the ice, where it's making contact and the ice is falling and where it's coming from. And then you just have a fisherman holding a pole above his head. <laughs> and that's not that's not that exciting, some would say. In this case, he made it more interesting by getting down and showing the context of both the fisherman and where the pole is making contact. Very beautiful photo. Very beautifully organized in terms of light. We have another one of a fisherman doing some on-deck tasks. Once again, wearing an orange wet suit. Uh, the, these suits contrast beautifully against everything else in the scene because everything else in the scene tends to be brown and a whole bunch of blue and white. So we see him sort of fumbling about, but the most interesting part of this photo is not what the fisherman is doing in this case. This is a photo that is taken of, it's, it's it's taken of a feeling, it's taken of an expression of the sea and being a fisherman. This photo to me is about the movement of the sea the the drama of being on a boat as a fisherman and having your work environment be rolling all the time having it be a bit dangerous having it be a bit insane and the way this is accomplished is one by the fact that the the framing's a bit crooked the horizon line is is very cattywampus if you will there's a wave crashing in the distance away from the boat there, everything being sort of all over the place gives you this feeling that that's exactly what you would feel like if you were on deck for the first time as a fisherman. Everything would be all over the place. And I love how he told that story here. Once again, we have seagulls lying around, adding aesthetic beauty. Thank you, seagulls. Now in this next one, it appears as if Corey got a little bit creative with his shooting method. It appears we're not on the ship, but we are riding one of the crab pots as it makes its way closer to the boat. We have a fisherman on the left-hand side waiting to retrieve it. We have a yellow rope starting from where we are and shooting out until it connects to the boat. We have water very beautifully shooting up around the, uh, the, the rope, and you can see that this pot is stirring up water. Lots of drama, lots of energy, and it really... It, it's a good way to shake things up in a photo story, for example. You have a bunch of shots of fishermen 
like we've been looking at. And you have one where you're actually in the water. Or you have one where maybe you're underwater riding the crab pot. It's, it's fun to look at his work from a photo story perspective in that sense. Because that's when things get really exciting for me here. It's a creative concept and, you know. Next. <laughs> the next one is the first one on the list that was taken at night. And we see the clever creativity of his mind. How he tries different things. He drugged the shutter, and obviously plenty of people drag the shutter, but it's easy to forget to drag the shutter in a, a scene like this. It's easy to forget that you can use the visual quality of the motion of the waves to add some excitement. It's a simple thing that a lot of photographers will do very quickly, but a lot of us won't do things like that, or maybe there are other, th- there's surely other things that you and I don't do in any given photographic situation, that if another photographer was standing there, they would go, hey, try this thing out. And at first you might be like, oh, I'm good. But they might take that photo and you might look at it later and you might go, oh, I see what he did there. That was quite nice. So it's important to always keep your mind open to new opportunities. And I, I, I for one, I'm so documentary and run and gun kind of focused that I would... I would not take the time to put my camera on a tripod and blur the waves in this case. That would be definitely a tendency of mine that could be to my detriment. But we have stark blackness in the background uh, or in the front of the boat. We have the we have one of the fishermen sitting on top of the crab pots on the deck. It's always fascinated me that there are parts in the fishing excursion where there are pots all across the deck to the point that you have to like weave between the pots, like a jungle of pots. But there are also other times where the deck is completely empty and you can work on it. It's always been interesting to me. But this photo to me is about the intense beauty of the sea as well as... I want to stop on that really quick. It's the intense beauty of the sea as accentuated by the nighttime. It, you get a different feel at night, anywhere in nature than you do in the daytime. So that's why I use the word intense. In the day, it could just be, oh, this is, this is glorious. But in, at night, there's a there's like a heavy beauty to being in nature. It's a little bit daunting. And if you, if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Uh, it also accentuates this immersive cold darkness. You see the water, you see the fishermen. If you rolled off the edge, you'd go into the water bad times. In the next one, once again, we are hanging dramatically over the edge of the boat. Beautiful for a photo, but Corey, please be careful. The brown of the boat is contrasted beautifully against the deep blue of the ocean. Then we have a fisherman in orange contrasted against the brown of the boat. A wave has just crashed against the boat, gone past, and we see the back of it, I believe. We see sea foam, very turbulent seas. And the story of this photo is that the ocean must be respected. In the next one, we have a different take on the story that the ocean should be respected. We just have a nice, tight shot of a wall of turbulent water. I'm guessing this wall of water got above Corey somehow. I'm guessing he's on the boat. There was a wave And I don't know, it looks quite intimate. It's not like he zoomed into it. It's like it's right there. So we get this feeling that we are in a relationship, an intimate relationship with the sea. And I'm sure that's how those guys feel. We see that it's a lot of water. This can be very dangerous. One should be careful. In the next one, we have a cat standing on top of some computer monitors inside on the bridge. It's humorous because the cat's climbing on things, but it's also humorous because there is, on one of the displays, some fish. Looks like they put an undersea cam so that they can monitor fish activity. I'm not sure, but there's this humorous play between the cat and the fish because obviously the cat would want to eat the fish and common folklore. And it's also hilarious to me that the cat is behind the monitor so he can't see the fish so he doesn't know that they're there but this speaks to the the mundane bits of living on a boat and finding humor in the small things 
In the next one, we have a female fisherman, which is a story in itself. I don't think there are a lot of female commercial fishermen out there. I would love to have a conversation with her about why she decided to become a fisherman, why she decided to live this gritty, potentially dangerous life. That would be a very intriguing conversation to have. But there's a nice expression on her face. She is looking slightly off camera. She has this slight smile on her face as if she knows that the camera's there and she's semi-interacting with us, but not at the same time. But she's working as well. She has a hand over the other hand, manipulating a net. She has these big blue gloves on. The net is a compositional layer to create depth, but it's also a layer of context. The net itself helps tell the story. And the photo would be less interesting without it, for sure. But uh, I think it's fantastic that he took a simple photo and made it more interesting. He he added a, a creative flair to things that made you want to stop and engage with it in a way that you may not want to if he didn't. In the next one, we have a fisherman laying down in a boat reading. A much smaller boat this time. We are at the front, the bow, if you will, and the bow makes a triangular shape. We have some water in the background. Fresh water, salt water, nuclear water, we don't know. He's reading something. Let me look close here. Uh, Dan Brown, Digital for Fortress? Did, did I can't read the the part on the back that tells you what it's about. I apologize. So there won't be any book recommendations in this video. I know that's what you guys come for. But it's a very visually engaging frame. And we have a relationship between normal and abnormal on display here. Normal being the fact that he's reading and you may also like to read. Abnormal being the fact that he's reading on some boat in Alaska somewhere living this very harsh lifestyle, but it's a relational connection point between us and the subject. In the next one, we have a man standing in a desolate white place, snow behind him, no vegetation or houses or anything of that sort, no McDonald's, and he's he looks like he's scouting for something. He has two rifles on the front of him. It's a simple but technically well done portrait in a lot of different ways. This photo is very saturated with narrative driving elements. We have the two guns, we have the binoculars in his hand, we have the very heavy clothing that lets us know that he is in a, a, an incredibly cold place. We have a landscape that lets us know that he's in an incredibly cold, extreme uh, place. His expression is one of, I, I have a lot of expertise in what I'm about to do with these rifles, perhaps, or what, whatever he's up to. I have a lot of expertise. I've spent a lot of time here. I know what I'm doing. I'm potentially having a good time but I'm also squinting because the sun is in my eyes. <laughs> but I really love this photo. Put a, put a nice little narrative bio of this person below and you, you got something really special. I mean, it's really special as is. Next, we have a shot from far away of a boat gliding through. It looks like a bay, perhaps. The boat is orange and white, which contrasts well against the blue and white surroundings. We have a mountain in the background. We have a sky with some clouds. In the foreground, we have just a bit of land poking in. So we have this nice layering between us, the, the land in the foreground, the boat in the middle, and all the water. And then we have the mountain in the far background and the sky in the far, far background. One day I'm going to look at a photo. I'm going to run out of, I'm going to have to add like 30 fars. <laughs> Maybe if it's like taken in space. Yeah, like, a, like Jupiter, and then behind it you have Saturn and Neptune, then the far, 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 far background, you have Andromeda, that sort of thing. I like space. Did you guys enjoy learning about space when you were coming up? Do you still like to learn about space? Space is very fascinating to me. We have a nice play of colors here. Uh, we have a set of relationships. We have the we have a relationship between the boat and the environment. We have a relationship between the people and the boat and the environment, right? 
So we have a lot of different relationships on display. The layering creates depth and the boat creates fish for us to eat. Hmm. In the next one, we're back in the boat. We have a man who is no longer wearing a wetsuit sitting in the, the galley, I think you would call it, eating cereal. And behind him, we have some men's fitness magazines. The, sh- the cereal seems to be quite sugary. He's having a good time, it appears. He's really leaning into it. The expression is like, this is the best day of my life. One thing that's interesting about this photo is that the composition accentuates the rolling of the boat. It's a little bit sideways. Another thing about this photo is the story it, tell, it tells is that we are all still kids on the inside in a lot of ways. You can go out and work and support your family, do all the stuff you're supposed to do as a man, but at the end of the day, you want some lucky charms, and that still makes you very happy. It speaks to the quirky side of life on a boat. This next one was taken on a boat from a high up point at night. We are angled towards the bow. There is a mast thing shooting up. There is a light on top of that mast thing. We have some cables starting near us, acting as leading lines running to it until it connects to the mast thing. The composition is invigorating here. One reason why is because the camera is angled slightly off center so the mast is not perfectly in the middle as if a lot of photographers would do i don't know why i'm talking like this at this point something has gone horribly wrong oh heavens i need to go to hospital (laughs) okay uh (laughs) another reason why this composition is very invigorating is because the background is blurry. What he did was he drug his shutter. So there's this left to right motion happening with the stars and the ocean is just a a smear. It's quite wonderful. It's a creative way to use your circumstances. In the next one, we have a very organic shot. Nothing particularly special aesthetically about it, of a man dragging a chain through some mud. He's covered all the way up past his waist in mud. A very dirty fellow. And this communicates the the grit of working as a fisherman. And this grit is also communicated through the organicness of the way this was framed. It's a little bit, a little bit crooked, uh, a little bit imperfect feeling. In the next one, we have three, count them, three bald eagles. Wow, isn't nature magnificent? We have... Two of the birds pointing towards the right, and then we have another one pointing towards the left. That adds some intrigue. Another thing that adds some intrigue is the depth and separation between the birds. They're not standing side by side as birds like to do. I don't don't know about bald eagles in particular, but birds like to do this. They are, they are, so one is closest to us standing on a net. There's one standing on a railing in the middle, and then in the background we have another one standing on a net. That adds some intrigue. One powerful force in this photo is the rule of odds. And the rule of odds is a guideline that says that it's a good idea to have three or an odd number of subjects in a frame as opposed to two or an even number. Now this goes all the way up past three, right? Four, five, seven, six, 52. And This is a way to make a photo more visually appealing, and in this case, he uses it to glorious effect. This photo is full of pleasing patternicity with the repetition of the birds, but also pleasing complexity. There's a lot of fun stuff going on here. Also, the back to patternicity, the repetition between the red railing closest to us and the red railing in the background. All of these things matter tremendously when you're trying to put together a complex photo like this. And finally, we have one of his photos in magazine format. That's right, old media, old people. For It was for National Fisherman. We have a girl, fisherman. She has some blue stuff on her face. Should probably get that looked at by a doctor. Not sure what that is. She has a wonderful expression on her face. Very serious, very focused, very knowing. She's looking just off to the right of the camera. 
left for us. She has a muddy rope over her shoulder. It's glorious. If you want to work with other people as a photographer, it's a good idea to think about how your photos can be adapted to different formats to become more appealing to the people that you want to work with. This is an art form in itself. Spend a lot of time thinking about this. I'm saying this because I'm just beginning that journey of adapting my work to be appealing to companies, and I'm seeing the importance of it. Okay, in conclusion, Corey Arnold's photos are as gritty as the fishermen he captures. He tells the story of life as a commercial fisherman, the hard labor that goes into that. Rather inspiring stuff. But if you, as a photographer, are trying to tell more compelling stories that feel like this, perhaps you need to be more brave and go to the place where the stories are. A lot of photographers are very happy taking photos of rolling hills in Nebraska if that's where they're from, or, or you know, the Midwest if that's where they're from, or, I don't know, uh, event photography in New York City if that's where they're from. But if you have an ambitious mind towards telling compelling photos that feel like the likes of Corey Arnold's or a Steve McCurry, or even like a James Knockway war photography, then maybe some bravery is in order. I think that's an important message for a lot of photographers. Uh, I haven't got the balls yet to go live on a commercial fishing vessel for whatever, four months. Maybe I'll grow them one day. But anyway, links below to this thing. I, I encourage you to check them out. Please feel free to share other photographers with me that you would like for me to cover. Hope you have a lovely day. If you hit the like button, lets me know that you appreciated this video. And that's that, that means a lot to me when I see that. And of course, the comments mean a lot too. Subscribe. Hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.